I'm Xu Sun Wang from Zhejiang University. Uh, this is a joint work with Zhihua Zhang. Uh, the title is Efficient Algorithm and Error Anal Analysis for the Modified Nistral Method. Uh, maybe some of you know the Nistral Method is, is a kind of kernel approximation method uh, for speeding up kernel methods. And in our previous work, we proposed a variant called the Modified Nistral Method. It is more accurate, um, but of course, more, uh, uh, of course lower. So in this paper, we propose uh, two efficient algorithms to make the modified instrument method uh, more practical, and we also provide some analysis uh, for the modified instrument method. Uh, since um, I, I suppose not all of you are familiar with, uh, not all of you are familiar with uh, the neutral method, so I spend half of my time uh, talking about the background information and uh, the related to work. Uh, uh, this, um, uh, in this talk, uh, I will be focused on the kernel approximation. Let k be an n times n kernel matrix. Uh, the matrix inverse uh, is, uh, is performed by some kernel methods like the Gaussian process regression, least square SVM, and the kernel ridge regression. Uh, the time complexity is quite high. Uh, the time complexity is cubic in n, and n is the number of data points. Uh, and uh, some other kernel, method, uh, kernel methods, like kernel PC and some manifold learning methods, perform partial eigenvalue decomposition. Its time complexity is quadratic in N, also very high. Uh, so um, th the time complexity is high, and, uh, when the, uh, uh, and when the number of data points is large, uh, they are prohibitive. So they are limited to uh, small and medium data sets. And they also have high temp, uh, space complexity. Uh, since matrix inverse and the eigenvalue composition are usually solved by some iterative algorithms, uh, so they need to us, uh, uh, so we have better put the whole kernel matrix into RAM. Otherwise, the swap between the, the RAM and uh, the disk can be very slow. Uh, you need to swap them for many times. So the space complexity is also high. And now we consider how to speed up. Uh, if we can find a fast low rank factorization uh, in this way, uh, then uh, the matrix inverse and partial eigenvalue composition can be solved uh, quite efficiently. Uh, example one, uh, suppose, uh, suppose we have the low rank factorization, uh, then uh, we can compute the matrix inverse in this way. We can expand uh, this ma the matrix inverse using the sherman morrison ubery formula and obtain uh, this equation. So we don't actually need to compute the matrix inverse. Uh, we need only to compute the uh, matrix inverse of a very small matrix and the, and the matrix product of uh, small matrices. And the time complexity and the space complexity are only linear in N. Uh, example two, uh, with the low rank factorization at hand, um, the eigenvalue composition can be approximately solved as follows. Uh, we, we first uh, pr uh, product, uh, uh, compute the product of transpose D uh, times D. It's, it's a small matrix, and, uh, and denoted by S, we compute the eigenvalue composition of S. Um, then the partial eigenvalue composition of K is approxim approximately uh, this way. Uh, so it's also very uh, time and space efficient. Um, now introduce the Nistrom method. Uh, it is first devised by Nistrom and uh, introduced to the machine learning community by Williams and Seizure. Um, given a kernel matrix K, we sample some columns of K to construct a matrix C. And here, W is the block of K and C. Uh, after permutation, we can always partition these two matrices in this way. Then the Nistrom approximation is C times pseudo inverse W times uh, transpose C. Uh, so you say, uh, since C is small, uh, it's also a low rank factorization. So it can be used to speed up the kernel methods. Uh, let's have a look at, a, uh, have a look again. Uh, given, a, given a kernel matrix K, we sample some uh, columns of K to construct matrix C and uh, rows to form a W. Then uh, C times pseudo inverse W times transpose C is the Nistrom approximation. 
Um, since the nist trump approximation requires something, a portion of columns to construct the matrix C, uh, so now I talk about some uh, column sampling algorithms. Uh, the problem is how to select informative columns of K to construct C. The criterion is to make the error as small as possible. Uh, however, it's not easy to solve because there are combinational many choices. Uh, so we don't say to uh, solve this problem exactly. We, um, we instead use, use some uh, approximation algorithms to find some good columns. Uh, we hope that the error ratio has some error bound, and the error bound is the smaller the better. In this, uh, in this ratio, here k subscripts k uh, means the best rank k approximation. Um, if the R pair bound is small, uh, then uh, the fast uh, matrix, uh, prox uh, the fast low rank uh, factorization is nearly as good as the best rank K approximation. Uh, okay, so we hope to, uh, to, uh, to make the upper bound as small as possible. Uh, now I introduce some uh, column sampling algorithms. Uh, first, uniform sampling. It is the simplest and most widely used uh, column sampling algorithm. Uh, we can sample C columns of K uniformly and random to construct matrix C. It's, it's very, very trivial. Uh, another more complicated uh, column selection algorithm is adaptive sampling. Um, it first samples C1 columns of K to construct C1 using some arbitrary algorithm, and then compute the residual. The residual is the projection of K onto the column space of C1. Uh, then we compute the sampling probabilities of each column. Uh, the sampling probability is proportional to the residual. Then we sample uh, C2 columns of K in C2 RID trials. Uh, and finally, uh, we combine the columns selected in, in, uh, in, the, in the algorithm. Uh, this, uh, this algorithm uh, is, uh, actually works very well in practice. The, uh, the error term uh, the first error term, uh, it is the uh, projection of K onto the column space of C. It has uh, upper error bound, uh, but the error incurred by the nist trump approximation has, n has no error bound. Uh, now we consider how to improve the nist trump method. Uh, there are basically two ways to improve the nist trump method. Uh, first, uh, we can devise some good column sampling algorithm to improve the, uh, the upper error bound. Uh, of course, better column sampling algorithm will result will results to uh, uh, more informative columns. And the second approach is to devise some other other type of low rank approximation instead of the nist trump approximation. Uh, first, uh, better sampling algorithms. Um, oh, we uh, we hope if uh, if a column sampling algorithm is good, then the error ratio will be small. Um, However, uh, very unfortunately, it cannot be arbitrarily small. Uh, in our previous work published on GMLR, we showed a lower error bound for this error ratio. As you see, this error ratio grows linearly in N. N is the number of data instances, and it can be very large. Um, so, so it means the, the standard Nistral method is, uh, uh, the standard Nistral method uh, can be very, very bad, actually. Um, the error is very bad uh, compared with the best rank K approximation. Uh, so, um, so we are inter more interested in devising some, uh, some, uh, some other uh, better uh, models. Uh, there's a, a method called the ensemble Nistral method. Uh, it, uh, it do the uh, standard Nistral method t times and take the average. And it works very well in practice. Uh, and it can, be, can also be used to speed up matrix inverse problem. Um, but unfortunately, this method uh, does not improve the lower error bound. Also, in our previous work, we showed that the, uh, it, we showed that, uh, the error ratio of the, mod, uh, the, the ensemble initial method also grows linearly in N. So it's also very bad. And in our previous work, we devised a, a variant called the modified Nistral method. It's, it uses an, a different intersection matrix. Uh, the standard Nistral method uses uh, pseudo, uh, pseudo inverse W as the intersection matrix. Here we use a different. Uh, and uh, fortunately, uh, we can show 
by using the adaptive sampling algorithm, uh, our modified neutral method can obtain this upper can obtain this upper bound. So it's error does not go with n. So our modified neutral method is actually much uh, much more accurate than the standard neutral method. Uh, now I introduce uh, our contributions. Um, first, I need to define some notation. Uh, define the time SVD to be the time for computing SVD or eigenvalue conversation, which is inverse, et cetera. Uh, and define uh, time multiplication to be the time of multiplying two n times n matrices. Uh, theoretically, when using the big O notation, uh, this uh, time SVD and time multiplication is actually the same, but they are very different in practice. Um, matrix multiplication can be easily solved uh, in parallel computing facilities. And the constant in the big O notation is only one, so it's very efficient. Uh, and large-scale matrix multiplication is not a real challenge in, uh, in, in real-world applications. But for SVD or eigenvalue decomposition, it's a different story. Um, now let's have a look at the comparison between the two methods. Uh, the standard initial method has the advantage of fast. Uh, it's, it takes only, uh, only uh, very little time to compute the intersection matrix. Uh, by comparison, uh, though the modified initial method is more accurate, uh, it's time, uh, it costs more time to compute the intersection matrix. Um, okay, uh, so is there a way to speed up the computation of the intersection matrix? Uh, naively computing the intersection matrix costs so many time, uh, costs so much time, and uh, we consider how to speed up. Uh, we observe that the more Penrose inverse of the partition matrices can be expanded. Uh, let P be a permutation matrix and let PC be partitioned in this way. If W is non singular, then uh, the more Penrose inverse of C can be expanded in this way. Uh, and since uh, PK times uh, transpose K can also be partitioned, so we can multiply them and obtain this result. So we had better use uh, this, uh, this equation to compute the intersection matrix. Uh, the, those intermediate matrices are, are all very small matrices. They are uh, C times C matrices. And the, uh, the matrix inverse operations are, are all on these small matrices. Uh, so it's, it's quite time efficient. It costs uh, time uh, cubic n, uh, cubic C to, uh, uh, to compute uh, for the SVD. Uh, by, uh, in comparison, the naive approach costs much more time. Um, but our method works only when W is non-singular. So before using the, ar the algorithm, we had better test the rank of W and then use it. Uh, theoretically, if K is a Gaussian RBF kernel matrix, and if the selected C data are distinct points, uh, then, uh, then W is non-singular in theory. So we can safely apply uh, our uh, fast algorithm. But if K is a linear kernel matrix, then W is usually singular, and uh, we have better not to use this algorithm. Okay, here's the empirical comparison. Uh, it's the result on a 15,000 uh, times 15,000 dense RBF kernel matrix. Uh, the blue curve uh, corresponds to the naive approach, and the green curve corresponds to our fast approach. And the red curve is the uh, time for computing uh, the standard initial method. As we say, our fast approach is a little faster. Uh, here's the, the result on a, on a sparse RBF kernel matrix with only 1% uh, entries to be non-zero. Uh, as you say, in, in this case, uh, our faster approach is tremendously faster. Okay, um, yet another unsolved problem in our previous work is that um, the column selection algorithm is, uh, is very complicated and uh, not quite efficient. So here we propose a, a more efficient column sampling algorithm and it's very, very simple and practical. It has three steps. First, a uniform sampling. It used the uniform sampling to sample some columns at random, and then run the adaptive sampling twice according to the residual of the last step. Then, after the three steps, we combine 
uh, the selected columns and denoted by C. This, this algorithm is actually very simple and easy to implement. And, and uh, it's, it has a low time complexity, actually. Uh, and fortunately, it, it, has, it also has uh, one plus epsilon relative error bound uh, by, by sampling only uh, this, uh, this many columns. Uh, the, this error bound is nearly uh, as good as the, uh, the complicated algorithm in our previous work. Uh, we also provide some uh, theoretical justification for the modifying neutral method. Uh, if the matrix K is symmetric, then the following three statements are equivalent. Uh, uh, it means if, if the kernel matrix K is low rank, then both of the standard neutral method and the modified neutral method uh, are exact, uh, means zero error. Okay. Um, one case low rank, then the standard initial method and the modified initial method are equivalent. Um, but in general, K is not low rank. Uh, so, uh, so in general, uh, our modified initial method is, is more accurate than the standard initial method. And we also proved a lower error bound for, for the modified initial method. Uh, so whatever column sampling algorithm is used, the error incurred by the uh, modified initial method must be greater than this factor. Uh, as you see, unfortunately, uh, this lower error bound is not too bad. It does not grow with n. And there is the, a interest, an interesting uh, connection between the modified initial method and the column selection problem. Uh, uh, there, has, uh, there is a lower error bound for the, uh, for the column selection problem. Uh, here, for the column selection problem, the error is the projection of A onto the column space of C. So it's very similar to our uh, modified initial method. And this lower error bound is tight because it is attained by a, a, by a column selection algorithm. Uh, so let's see the two error bounds. Uh, I give a comparison here. Uh, the first is the lower error bound of the modified initial method. Uh, here, the error is, is uh, the projection of, of K onto the column space of C and the row space of transpose C. And the second is the low error bound of the, of the column selection problem. And so it's quite similar. And the difference in their low error bound is, is different by only a factor of two. So um, it's very reasonable conjecture that the conjecture that the low error bound of the modified initial method is also tight and is yet a, an open problem. Uh, let's summarize the problem again. Um, uh, our lower error bound shows that uh, at least 2k over epsilon columns should be sampled to obtain 1 plus epsilon error bound. And there's uh, upper error bound in our previous work. So the lower error bound is k over epsilon and the upper error bound is k over squared epsilon. So there is a gap between the, the, the upper error bound and the lower error bound. So it means there is a room for improvement. Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, there is some column selection algorithm can obtain the lower error bound. It will, it will imply that the lower error bound is tight and the algorithm is optimal. Um, so it's an open problem, not yet solved. Okay, I finished. Thank you. This, this is the reference. Uh, thank you for your speech. So uh, I'm wondering uh, whether the approximated kernel metrics are doing also very well on the real, I mean, prediction task. A real a prediction. I mean, task. when you when using the kernel appro uh, approximated kernel matrix to to really do some prediction tasks, like um, using. Yes, actually, um, someone has said the kernel approximation uh, is is not a choice, uh, a desperate. It's not a desperate choice. It works very well in practice. It's very accurate, and there's a lot of empirical uh, em empirical comparisons uh, in the literature. You can find them. It, it works very, uh, very good in practice. You mentioned that your method uh, works uh, mainly when the subsampled uh, kernel matrix is going to be invertible. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, it, how are your results unstable if you add a ridge to the to that subsampled kernel matrix, or, or is that a theoretical problem, or is is that just something that needs uh, to be verified? Yeah, uh, actually, there are several ways uh, to to speed up the computation, and I tried several methods, and uh, I find this one is the most numerical stable approach. So, so okay, thanks. Okay, uh, if there's no other questions, then I guess uh, the next speaker uh, can please set up.